EPA and WA meteorologist Bobby Markich here with your outlook for January 17th, 2023. It is Tuesday, and the Tuesday video forecast is proudly sponsored by J. Evans Property Services, serving York, Lancaster, Chester, Berks, Lebanon, and Southern Dolphin Counties in Pennsylvania and also Northern Maryland. J. Evans Property Services is a family-owned business that offers quality work at competitive prices and features premium landscaping and design, sod install, drainage solutions, as well as residential and commercial complete properties. Property maintenance. They are offering 15% off any trimming or tree work and also have a price match guarantee on all landscaping, deck, and fencing, uh, fencing project contracts that they, when they give a quote for the upcoming 2023 season, now through the end of February. You can reach out to them at the phone number above me here in the video or schedule an estimate through their website, landscapingcontractorslancasterpa.com. They are J. Evans Property Services, proud sponsors of the Tuesday video forecast so today we have a frontal boundary moving through very weak front and uh, we also have a lot of dry air uh, that is going to be fighting so this is going to kind of fall apart as it moves eastward there will be a few showers few very light showers and, and uh, if you look above me you have the rain icon there but it, don't let that deceive you because this is not going to be a rain out day most of the day is just going to be cloudy you're going to have a few spotty showers here and there maybe a couple hundredths of an inch that it lays down is not much and you can see this just falls apart right we get over the NAM high res future simulated radar. This is using a composite of reflectivity, which picks up on everything, even drizzle, right? So this is uh, looking at 6 o'clock in the morning. Watch what happens as they move this eastward here. It just kind of falls apart. There's really not much there to the left. So a little batch goes down by the Delmarva. You little, get some spotty, maybe a spotty shower elsewhere. But other than that, there's really not a lot of uh, rain with this today. And then once we get into the evening, uh, it's it's drying out but you're just remaining mostly cloudy overnight maybe a spotty shower in our far interior areas overnight and that's about it that's all we have for this event today if you want to call it that so it never was expected to be much but there is a few spotty showers so if you want to bring an umbrella knock yourself out i don't think it's going to be rising to that level where you're going to need to, to you know, you'll be walking the car to get drenched or anything like that so uh it will be generally mild today though 40 to 47 as the temperature spread today, even milder on uh, Wednesday with a 45 to 55 degree spread from northwest to southeast. And we're expecting a lot of stratocumulus uh, to be hanging around here with a short wave off to our north. You got that short wave sitting right up here. So there'll be a little bit of inst increased instability, and that's going to lead to an increased amount of stratocumulus. So mostly cloudy skies are going to be the result for at least the northern two-thirds of our region, maybe a little bit more in the way of sundown towards the Delmarva here on Wednesday. But we're kind of splitting hairs there, okay? Then the next system comes in. This is going to be in the form of rain as well. However, uh, it does have, at least in the NAM, as I'm going to show you in a second, and the European model showing very late uh, Wednesday night for these showers to come in. If that's the case, there could be enough of uh, some enough cold air in place at the surface to provide for some light freezing rain. And I'm going to switch this over on the NAM here to a precipitation type radar, just so you can see what's going on here on Wednesday. And you get very late in the overnight. And as this is moving off to the north, you're getting some freezing rain across our northern areas, especially areas of elevation. Now, this is probably not going to be that much. It's going to be changing the rain very quickly. But we'll have to watch for these areas across uh, by the I-80 corridor in points north for a icy start. Okay, And this is looking at early Thursday morning at 7 a.m. So there might, might be enough cold air there at the onset. You could start off that way with this. Uh, system, but it is going to change over to rain everywhere, and then uh, the rain is going to continue through the evening hours before coming to an end, and this is going to pull away. Much like on Wednesday, tomorrow, there's going to be a short wave left in its wake across uh, the northern areas, so we're going to be dealing with the same thing here on Friday, which is uh, mostly cloudy skies and a lot of strata cumulus, especially in the northern half of our region that's closest to that short wave, but no precipitation is expected here on Friday. It's going to be a very similar day to Wednesday, just not quite as warm, okay? Uh, after that, we get to a partly cloudy day here on Saturday. Temperatures are going to lower a little bit ahead of our next system, and this is where it gets a little interesting, and I spoke about this in yesterday's video and brought it up for the first time. It actually was showing over the weekend in a similar manner. We have two different camps with this, and there could be a thread the needle opportunity if everything lines up correctly. Thread the needle is going to involve perfect timing, perfect track, because it's it's a, coming at a time when the pattern is kind of iffy before and after. So it's going to have to come in right at the right time. Your best chase scenario, if you want any kind of snow out of this, is for it to come in in the overnight hours, Sunday night into 
Monday morning. That's going to maximize your snow potential across the region with the timing. But there's a few features that uh, mainly with the northern stream they're going to be watching. And uh, if that can ca if that catches up to the system, it's going to end up cutting. If it heads out ahead of it, and I'm not going to show you the upper air analysis here, but on Saturday there's going to be a, we think, a short wave that's going to run way out ahead of this or some upper level energy running way out ahead of us. If that's the case and it misses this system down here, then we have a shot at snow or at least a start of snow, uh, depending on the timing. If it does not and instead digs down and meets up with this system, it's going to end up cutting off to our west and we're going to get rain out of it. Now, that has been the trend this winter, and it's easy for you to somebody to say, well, that's the way it's been all winter, so why would this be any different? It's still a possibility. I'm just showing this as a thread-the-needle possibility. Thread-the-needle is not high probability, so don't get that twisted. But there is the opportunity here, and the European model has been showing that. Move this over to a precipitation-type radar, and I'm going to move this uh, up through this next system. This is what the European model has, and for the second straight day, it has snow in the interior, like it showed yesterday. So... And this actually goes beyond two consecutive days. I mean, we've had this uh, showing over the weekend as well from the European model. So you could get some snow in the interior out of that, and maybe a couple inches out of it. I mean, it's not going to be a big storm, huge storm, but you still have the opportunity for some snow. This will be a thread the needle opportunity. And the reason it does this is because of timing. If you look up top here, this is coming in late Sunday night and Monday morning when it's still colder. Okay. And it's because those energy pieces remain separate. The GFS does not keep those separate and instead amps up this system, combines the northern stream energy into it, and then that cuts off to our west and invites a lot of maybe a wintry start. But other than that, it's primarily rain from that system. So two different ideas there. Uh, the If you want to use uh, the Canadian model as a tiebreaker, it's kind of favoring the European model in, in, with regard to the antecedent energy I spoke about coming through over the weekend ahead of that system is doing the same general idea with that not catching up to that system in the south and pulling it to the west. So uh, we really don't, that's, that's not how it works in meteorology necessarily. Just because you have everything agreeing with one, you go to have one lone model that's correct. It doesn't mean anything. So we're just going to follow trends throughout the week and see where this goes. But uh, right now, we still have two different distinct camps for that thread the needle possibility, which right now we're going to focus on the Sunday night, Monday time frame for that system to occur. Uh, GFS, because it's cutting it west here, is bringing it in sooner on Sunday afternoon instead. And, uh, of course, that would be too warm for any snow if it felt came during the day as well. So timing is going to be key. Track is going to be key. And the key to that feature is going to be this upper level system moving ahead of it, whether it does or not, uh, which will determine whether or not we have a shot at snow, at least some snow for the interior out of that system at the end of the seven-day forecast period. I'm EPAWA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for January 17th, 2023. Have a great Tuesday.